Yeah, so it, it, should it, be seems to, it seems to be um, a little bit choppy today. Um, yeah, let's see. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> how, you get how, hurt. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> how, how was your weekend, Michael? <laughs> Uh, weekend was good. I spent a lot of time reading, was out in the park. We had a good amount of rain, uh, so not too much and not too little. Um, yeah, just enjoyed myself. So I was, tra was traveling a lot last week, and uh, so I mm. enjoyed the time by myself, I, I think. I was in <laughs> London by train, so I went from Germany to London by train. By train? It act okay. actually worked really well. So I want to try okay. to fly less in Europe, and uh, mm -hmm. so... I couldn't go to, to Sweden by train the other week um, because the train was actually booked out, um, mm. the uh, train from Sweden. Yeah. But uh, going to London worked actually quite well. So it was from here to Frankfurt, from Frankfurt to Brussels, and then only two hours from Brussels to, to London, actually, which was quite impressive. Ah, okay. Yeah. Very good. So that was good. I'd... And yeah, saw a lot of people yeah, in the office. And we had a meetup, actually, on, on Wednesday. So... Yes. For those folks that missed it, uh, I also posted the recording URL on on the Meetup site as well. Yeah, I think exactly. Can I think we, as well. we, we, we can share it. Yeah, <clears throat> that was um, last week. Let me see if I can find this quickly. Um, mm -hmm. Just or, to uh, the chat. I can do it. Uh, one second. Oh, you got it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so people now. can 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 watch that. Okay, no, I yeah. I had a good time. I was off last week, obviously. Yeah, you had vacation. So I had. How did uh, it go? Uh, exactly, it was very good. It was um, uh, it was nice. I, we had a family uh, party at the beginning of the week, so it was mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was good, and the uh, weather was was nice, so we we were lucky. Uh, uh, second second half of the week, um, um, I stayed uh, home basically and didn't do too much uh but it was uh was good did as you well. play any board games or anything uh, like not not this not this time no i i didn't no i didn't there was no time really i mean i played with my niece but that doesn't really count as a board game <laughs> <laughs> so, it all counts everything no. counts yeah. yeah we played uh, munchkin on the weekend uh for, ah, yeah. i hadn't played munchkin for a long time so that was good right. and yeah and a friend Lama. of mine um shared that they are making a digital edition of it um oh interesting so, sometimes towards end of the year i think or even beginning of the next i think it's supposed to be a digital board game uh with the munchkin set so i think that could be fun fun game to play mm -hmm. if you don't have a group of friends around but you want to play it with uh people uh on yeah. the game yeah exactly yeah. oh the other thing uh so i finished reviewing talk submissions for uh oh. for notes mm -hmm. on the weekend and really good talk submissions and nice. i am really excited for the conference and if you haven't uh looked at it yet uh please make sure to go to the notes page and register and sign up uh, for the event so because we'll have a lot of uh, goodies also coming before the event already uh, so that's definitely something uh you should check out and make sure so there will be much more coming over the next few weeks but um in general it's it's something that we're really excited about can't wait yeah and this time awesome. it's actually across all time zones so we st we start in the Amer americas then uh cover asia pacific and then go to europe so we have on the 16th and 17th of november we have uh full coverage basically uh for notes yeah yeah that, sign that, up that will will be great exactly sign up i posted a link in chat this this perfect segue i had this this little thank you <laughs> Alex, uh, perfectly prepared <laughs> perfectly prepared exactly <laughs> so this was this was uh exactly what i wanted to talk about as well uh looking Super. forward to the agenda so i think that's going to be fun <clears throat> and very um very mm. exciting to see w w what's what's it going to be like uh and what we have on, in, in store so um uh can actually talk uh, about, about this more yeah Exactly, right? So we want to take f some of the next few live streams to talk about the agenda and some upcoming talks and uh, perhaps yep. if we can get some speakers as well to share what they uh, uh, want to talk about and p think about presenting. Um, yeah. And perhaps we can do next week, like importing the talk submissions as a data set in Tunier4j to play around a little bit with that and topics and 
and use cases and and speakers yeah and, and and so on so that would be fun so i, I think we that's did this definitely in the back yeah end and visualized it with near dash and it was really nice uh, to see it okay all cool coming together yeah i think that that's a great idea uh, and then we can uh, we can tease a little bit what what's what's going to happen at nodes uh, and mm -hmm. people will get a you know a, an idea of what what they can Mm. expect to see uh, exactly and then we have uh, you know towards end of the month i think the plan was to have the agenda published so then everybody can see um what um what speakers what topics what uh what uh, what's there uh, going to happen in november yep exactly can't yeah wait it will be a lot of fun yeah definitely but today super uh we do uh yet uh, another uh, aura db um uh, show so um Yep. we have the usual i'll just just give a quick quick recap uh of of, of what neo4j aura db3 is And uh, again, uh, the the invitation is 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 open to everybody. If you have a data set, if you have something you'd like to to see, or if you find something that is interesting, let us know. Send us a tweet or or uh, on Discord or wherever else. Email, uh, reach out to us and let us know. And and then we can um, we can look at this data set of yours <clears throat> and and try to work it into one of the next uh, episodes. Um, we usually go, but you know, we look at the data. We we think about some questions. What 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 would be interesting? What would we want to know out of this data set? Then we import the data set uh, into um, into Neo4j, and then we we query it um, from depending on on the model we have determined beforehand. So that's that's the standard procedure here. Um, AuraDB free is the free version of Neo4j AuraDB. So you 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 get this as a Yeah, uh, just for registering. So you basically go to this page, and I'll, I'll share the link in chat, and then you get <clears throat> a free edition uh, of yours. You can use as you like. It's now uh, increased uh, capability, so you get 200,000 nodes and 400,000 relationships. So I think that's a that's a pretty pretty big big set. So you have uh, a lot of opportunities with with this. You have you get to use Neo4j Bloom. You get to use Neo4j Browser, obviously, and the data importer, which is um, a very easy way to get started with, with Neo4j. So if you are not sure about it all, and if you don't want, don't, don't know Cypher, don't, don't want to write queries or, or code or anything like this, you can use Data Importer and Neo4j Bloom to get a graph working without a single line of Cypher in essence. So it's 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 very, very easy. Um, it stays with you forever. So that's another big point. So you, as long, you, you, you subscribe as long, As long as you have it, you you will you will have access to your to your Aura free uh, instance. Um, it will get paused, obviously. So if you don't use it, we we pause it. But you can always restart it again. Uh, and uh, if you continue to use it, you you won't it won't get. Yeah. Uh, and if you want to know more, if you wanna um, if you wanna set yourself up uh, for a for a Aura instance, please check it out. The link is in chat now. And uh, and have a have a go with it. And today uh, we talk about citations. So um, yeah, uh, I'll switch over to your screen, Michael. Thank you. Um, yeah, actually, uh, it was kind of interesting. So I um, a week or two ago or so, uh, someone tweeted about. Uh, Open citations in Neo4j, and I saw it popping up in this uh, in the Twitter stream. Uh, here, there was an uh, someone asking about could there be a Neo4j endpoint for open citations, right? So, and I thought, oh, that's actually quite nice. And they actually answered they have a download uh, for the whole data set. And so Mm I thought, oh, perhaps that's something nice for uh, for the stream uh, to to look into. And uh, so I looked at their uh, download page. Um, so they also have a query interface uh, that I probably can start showing the query interface. So you basically can query for a, a, a name or text or for a specific paper, and then you get results. So for instance, here I queried for database and got 4,200 uh, papers that cite or have database in, in their name somewhere. Right? Um, and then you can uh, look at an individual paper here Uh, which gives you a little bit more detail about the paper, uh, what kind of article, who are the authors. And then it says here, cited by 197 uh, documents. 
Mm -hmm. And here you see all the citations, all the uh, uh, publications that cited uh, this uh, document. So I thought that looks actually quite nice uh, for us to use. Um, so then I looked at the download page and they have like full data dumps of, of their data. And <laughs> so <laughs> I guess it's a little bit too big for our uh, <laughs> Aura free instance. Uh, so it's yeah. <laughs> 221 gigabytes unzipped. Uh, so I'll probably download it sometime and, and turn it into a Neo4j database or something and then make it available. Uh, but probably not for, not for today as such. Not for today, I, I mean, no. Uh, as an easy way, you could just export results here as, as uh, uh, let's say, database open citations CSV. And uh, so you can probably open this in Finder and, and Yeah, then you get, you get the 4,000 or so. Um, yeah, exactly. Let's see. I have it probably here. The 4,000. So you get basically the corpus ID, the year title and the authors as comma separated list but you don't yeah. get the citation information right so you only get the aggregated number of citations okay. right so which is yeah. not really what we need for a graph because the only thing that we could take from this graph is basically um and um like who are the authors basically right and and that's yeah. about it and um so by, by the by the I, way by speaking hmm? speaking of papers the the health echo and COVID graph team has just published a paper on uh, on uh, uh, two weeks ago or last week I put a link in chat so uh, it's it's the um, or I can send it to you the name so maybe you can find it in there as well it's um, it's called um, COVID graph a graph to fight uh, COVID-19 uh, and it was written mm -hmm. by Leah Gittebier as, um, and, and with the team supporting the team and it was published on the 30th of August and I think the team is super happy about this and very mm. very proud that this got this got um, this got published now and it's okay. uh, nice. yeah, it's pretty cool yeah so we could actually see if I can I just open this um let's see so I think you can search for DOE numbers as well uh, in the search here. Uh, so if you look at querying data, and then there's the search interface. And here we should be able to put in the DOE number. Let's do this here. And no results were found. Probably it's too new to it's maybe have too made new, it yet yeah. into the. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but we can probably check, check back later uh, as such. Yeah. So, and there are probably also no citations yet, right? So, uh, because it's just. No, not published. yet. No, I guess. But it cites, of course, it's uh, papers, right? So, it does. So that's really, really nice. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Super. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's a cool, uh, cool recent um, uh, development yeah. um, on, uh, on, on Health Echo. Yeah. So there, there were two other things that I remembered as uh, to kind of how can we work around the uh, uh, the size of the of the data set here, right? So so one was um, for uh, actually for the graph algorithms book, uh, oops, uh, for the graph algorithms book uh, in the link prediction chapters, uh, Mark and Amy had uh, done where are the link prediction chapters airports here I think co-authorship. Um, so there's a link prediction uh, chapter or section in, in the book. Yeah. And they use an, a citation graph as well. So they have basically an article author um, uh, and venue data set. So I thought that could be also an interesting one to get. And um, so we have a uh, uh, graph, graph examples uh, thing uh, for, the, uh, for the data as a dump file. And it also exists as a sandbox. So if you go to sandboxes, sandbox.neofj.com, use case citations. So it's also been used in one of the uh, older Graph Academy courses as well, um, as such. Mm -hmm. right? So I thought, okay, that's nice with the dump file, and I could import the data into the dump the dump file into uh, into Aura as well. But then where's the fun in that? Just importing the dump file and not actually modeling the data and and, and so on. So what I thought we could do instead is actually we import this data uh, into a Neo4j instance here on my local machine and then export it as CSV and then we use the CSVs from Neo4j actually to, to turn it into, 
into our graph. So that's what I did. Um, so I uh, basically, uh, I hope you can read this actually. Uh, is this readable, Alex? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Or no, should I make it bigger? Readable. So it's, no, I'm, I'm basically using. this works. Yeah. I'm using Neo4j admin load, um, loading our citation stump that I just showed you, and into a database called Citations in in my local Neo4j. Right. So it's pretty quick. Uh, it should just take a few seconds. Okay. Right. So that's that's it. And now uh, we can go back uh, to our database uh, that I have open, I think, locally here, right? And I can now say create database citations. Okay. And uh, use citations. And now we see we have 132,000 nodes and 221,000 relationships uh, of this citation uh, data, right? So we have mm -hmm. authorship and, and, and citations as well. And so, for instance, if I look now at our citation graph, it looks like this. These kind of papers cited each other, and I could probably also expand this, and then there are more <clears throat> citations and, and 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 so on, right? So, it's basically here's a lot of citations from one paper, or no, a paper yeah. is cited cited quite often, right? So the so this the is kind pink, of the pink pink bubbles are articles, uh, blue exactly. bubbles are. Venues, venues are pu publications uh, something publications, that's kind of the okay. term yeah. yeah that's the term for like nature and and like advanced ah, okay. computer science and yeah. IEEE and and so on that's what you call venue what for whatever reason I don't know and the yeah, other okay. ones are authors here right authors, yeah. and okay. um so that's our basic our graph right we have author relationships people that authored papers uh paper that cited other papers and papers that have been published in venues right so yeah, and of course this is just a subset of the whole citation data set. As we've seen, it's pretty big, but it's yeah. good enough for us uh, to to work with, right? Yeah. Um, so I thought, uh, okay, then how can we turn this into CSV files, uh, individual CSV files, one per node and one per relationship, basically? And there's a really cool function in APOC called um, APOC export CSV all, so that exports the whole database. There's also a version that's called Query where you can pass in a Cypher query and it exp exports the um, results of the Cypher query uh, as CSV. Uh, and mm -hmm. then we say citation CSV and then bulk import true. So it basically generates the format that the, the Neo4j bulk importer would use as such. Ah, okay. mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, the Neo4j admin uh, import uh, command for bulk imports, right? Uh, but it's actually quite nice for us because we have get one node, uh, one file per node, one file per relationship, and we can use uh, that with data importer as such, right? So this is, uh, so this, just is this is great for, if you if you make a dump of your data and you want to import it some in, in another database graph database then you don't have to worry about the yeah, format exactly. right exactly exactly yeah. so then it's just csv and and also if you want to take the data from your database and want to kind of import partial uh, bits of it somewhere else for instance that's yeah. also mm -hmm. a good way to do it and also the csvs are easier to uh, the CSV and the data model for the uh, data importer are easier to pass around across versions. And so you don't have to worry about versions of dump files and stuff like that as well. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And what it does is basically, uh, if you look into the input uh, folder here, why does it want to open the input folder? One second here, uh, import. And here you see now it generated these files, three files for the uh, nodes and uh, three files for the relationships. And if you look at these files, uh, they should be, come on. <laughs> it's a little bit big for Finder to show. Perhaps the, the venues is easier. The venues is a bit smaller. <laughs> yeah, right. And uh, yeah. or like uh, decided relationships is basically just started and, and type of relationship. Yeah. Okay. Um, but we we'll load them into data importer and then we can actually look at them in their full beauty. So that's what I used the local Neo4j instance for. So I can close it now again. I, uh, we don't need to look at the data here because we want to do it in, in Aura itself. Um, the other thing that I also uh, remembered is because we've been using, or uh, Mark has been using the citation graph quite a lot in, in other places, is the, the original data comes from the DBLP citation network. Uh, which is linked here on the link prediction uh, developer guides. So I can put this also in chat. Let me do this. Okay, cool. um, I, I the, and so if you go, to, yeah, if you go to there, uh, then you see basically there. Uh, that's the um, citation network uh, data page. 
right? So, and you can get different versions of it and, 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 and so on, right? But it's, I think, in JSON, uh, because if you look at uh, Mark's input instructions here, uh, they basically use uh, JSON to import the data. Uh, so in JSON loader. Uh, uh, okay. So uh, from that perspective, it's uh, it's not in CSV. So, but we now have our. Uh, so you see that it uses epoch load JSON from of the data yeah. uh, that we also used in the past uh, before, right? But uh, it's okay because uh, I think uh, this gives us good uh, input. And now we can actually get started, right? So we can go to our Neo4j or instance, create a an citations uh, empty database here, and uh, create instance. I can download the data uh, connection credentials, citations, this one. Please continue. And then somewhere we have citations here. The top, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And while we're waiting uh, for it to, to start, I also want to use Workspace today because uh, we can use Data Importer. And, and so I want to show how um, Workspace is, um, enables us to, uh, to do this as yeah. such. Right. Um, and you, you, you've been a bit quick, but um, in the when when you are wondering how, what to do with your if you're not, if you're a fresh new graph database and you don't have a data set and you know you can watch any of the episodes past here in the in the on, on YouTube in the playlist and then you see yeah. um, we we have now I don't know how many episodes we we have and we have all the data sets. Uh, usually... I think it's week thirty eight or something like that that we have yeah. now. Uh, so there's a lot of there's a stuff, exactly there's a lot uh, of here. lot of lot of stuff you you can use so if you if you are wondering and and if that is not what you want then you you, Let you us get know. now you get now a selection of a couple of predefined aura instances so if you if you yeah. start an aura already be free instance you you get um i think to choose between 3 plus obviously the blank one uh, yeah. pre preloaded um already be instances so you can you can use the, the data from there. So they are sort of a little bit catered towards a certain use case. I think there's a financial one and a recommendations yeah. one. And uh, the third one is, is the movies set, obviously. Yeah. Uh, Let's but see you, if I still you... can create a new one. No, I'm out of Aura free instances right now. But uh, yeah, there's sample, yeah. Uh, sorry, there's movies, uh, graph recommendations, Stack Overflow, Cybercrime. Um, and the blank one right now. The blank one, is, yeah, exactly. So th there is there is some 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 stuff there. So if you don't know what what data to use, you can you can play with 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 the preloaded uh, examples. Exactly. Exactly. So we just waited two minutes until should have done this <laughs> before we uh, talked about all the sources, uh, <laughs> but. Um, it should only take like a few more seconds for it to uh, to get online. Yeah, it usually um, is quick. Exactly. So, but if you're interested in in this uh, more data graph data science related things, uh, the book is still available as a digital download, so you can uh, still get the graph algorithms book from Mark and Amy. Uh, actually, Michael, I think the book is no longer available. Oh no! Be because it, some some things have changed, as far as I know. Yeah. But that, if you um, want to get a copy, ping us, Alex or me, and we, we can get you a copy. Yeah, we, we can probably get yeah. it to you. Uh, although the uh, some some of the, the yeah, some of the syntax has changed, graph, but yeah, the, the, exactly. basics, uh, the, the basic the yes. concepts are still the same, right? So the, the exactly. basic concepts yeah. are not are not wrong, but it's uh, yeah, that the code examples might not work anymore because uh, with now with GDS two dot one, uh, I think the um, the algorithm has um, has made some. Some changes yeah. in, the, in the syntax. And the that's changes why. are mostly around uh, graph project instead of graph create, and then there's some new functionality for link prediction in there as well that's built in actually into GDS. No. Yeah. Yeah. So we are also getting new graph academy courses for GDS in the coming months. Uh, so there will be new content uh, coming from that pers uh, perspective yeah. as well. Okay. Now our instance is running. Uh, we can open Workspace. And connect to our instance. I just need to steal the password one second from my saved copy. Here it is. 
And there we go. So let me just clear this out. Okay. Um, so we're at um, the data importer. So because we opened an empty database, it opens up uh, on, on data importer. And now we can start adding our, our data. So first of all, we're going to get our files, our six files, three for the nodes and three for the relationships. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we can start mapping. So of course, what we have first is our article, right? So because we have articles in our citation uh, network. And uh, then we can say, okay, we want to map actually one of the files to, uh, to uh, this node, uh, which is actually this one, citations node article. And we can yep. select the properties from file. Uh, we want to select all except the label. Um, and you see here in the format, format with the colon long and the colon ID is actually something from the bulk importer. So that's something that we can rename as such. Uh, so we can just go here to, to rename and uh, turn this into ID and uh, turn the year into to just year. And the number of citations you can also turn into. Uh, oops. Sorry. I click too quickly, uh, <laughs> number citations. Uh, actually, I want to call it just citations. Yeah. Right. Uh, there's some uh, new features in data importer actually. Uh, so one is that it auto selects the ID. So if it's uh, obvious what the ID field is, it auto selects the ID, which is quite nice yeah. because you don't need to that go into good. that. And yeah. it also starts to determine uh, data types. So for instance, like I, our ID is an integer, our year is an integer, and our citations is also an integer. So it basically goes over the first few hundred lines of the data and looks at yeah. uh, what kind of data types does it find there and then makes suggestions about the data types here, which is quite nice. Right? That's really good. Yeah. Cool. And now we have basically our next note is our author, right? So someone or a number of people wrote this uh, paper or this article. Mm -hmm. And so for the author, we only have ID and uh, label uh, name for the author. Again, we just rename our ID field and then have an author relationship here between the article and the article and the author himself or themselves. Right? Okay. Uh, the other thing is the venue, uh, which is the publication, right? So. Venue, you wanna, and yeah, okay. we again take our publication here and select a file, select from file, ID and name, and our ID, I'll just rename this with again to ID. And the last one, uh, or the, the second to last one is a uh, venue here uh, for our start from article, go to venue, and then the very last one is basically self-relationship from article to article. So we can uh, do also self-relationships here. And then is, uh, I think it's called site in the model from Mark. Let's see cited. Right, so that's kind of the, the model here that we're following. Uh, mm -hmm. So cited. And it also is here in the name. <laughs> so I could have just used that. Uh, from article to article, right? Uh, so that's our basically our graph that we want to look at, right? And the interesting bit is uh, in the co-authorship and the authors, and then in the citation of uh, the article. So the venues is is it okay, but it's not so important because you know each publication yeah. has tens of thousands of articles published as well. And then there's a new feature in Data Import as well where you can preview the import, and it basically takes a bunch of uh, nodes and relationships from each file, and then uh, creates an uh, virtual import. So it doesn't really import it, uh, but it basically tries to input it and rolls back the transactions, but we still get the data here, right? So we see the, uh -huh, okay. um, yeah. the venue and uh, the articles, and we can also inspect the data here as well, right? So we see basically what uh, information is in an, uh, in a venue, what information is in an article and, and, and so on. So it's actually quite nice as a preview, right? As a preview, yeah, yeah. And, you can and then we can and see. Yeah. Exactly. And then we can do a run import and then it actually does go ahead and imports our data into our into our graph as such. Very good. 
So, is this is this available for every because it says early access on top right? Is every anybody that starts an Aura instance gets this, or is it, is do you need to s s register for anything, or or do you know? Or do you know? So do you have to go to a certain? I think there's a neo 4 jcom slash workspace where you can sign up for workspace, and it's now open to everyone. Uh, so everyone who signs up gets immediate access to workspace as well. Um, so if you go here, sign up for early access, then you can get access to workspace. Uh, to play around with it uh, early on. Okay. Cool. So we can. Do you want to put it into? I'll put it in chat. Yeah. Into chat. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Super. Um. So and now it's almost done. It had an error. Save it. Service unavailable. Okay. That's interesting. I think we'll just rerun the import then, because the nice. Oh no! Our or instance has an issue let's try this again could not find routing servers is it offline uh, let's disconnect and connect again let me just do this again uh, here's our connection well and here's our password. So, and let's try to run the input again. We should it's actually see. <laughs> yeah, Maybe exactly. It's dropped, it's dropped the connection somehow. Yeah. Uh, so let's see. I mean, yeah. I think it should be fine uh, inputting the data. And if you use this and, and discover something that is not working, yeah, as you should send feedback button here. Exactly. Here. Yeah, it's very handy and very useful. So you can just submit any anything uh, from feature requests or wishes to actual bug reports. You can use yeah. the the, yeah. the the feedback form. See, two times is a charm. Uh, so no, no, right. imported everything. So it took four seconds to import. Uh, the how much is it actually? What was it? Two hundred thousand? Yeah, uh, hundred thousand nodes, three hundred thousand ships, forty megabytes. So fifty, sixty megabytes, megabytes of data. So in thirty seconds. So that's. The uh, constraints and the loads uh, load uh, varies here. So because it uses merge on IDs, it's uh basically uh, item put in. So I can just run it again. And if it's partially imported, it will just work again. Right. OK, and now we can here click on Start Querying. And uh, so this gets us into into the Query tab. And it puts in automatically a query here that we see uh, as, as results uh, yeah. visualized uh, in, our, in our data. Right? That's cool. So you see first directly if, if it's, I mean, this is, this is a little bit like the schema visualization, right? Which, which we used to use to run yeah. initially when, when you want to see, okay, what's your, uh, what does the graph look like? Is this, is this actually, uh, yeah. you, know, you see, I mean, we had, we had the model in, in, in the data importer drawn out earlier and this is exactly what it, yeah. what it is. Exactly um, right. So, uh, but so it is more abstract. Right? This is, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, exactly. So, in in, in query, we can call DB schema visualization. Then we get exactly the same uh, as we had before. So it was probably like this here, right? Yeah. <laughs> to to <laughs> use it exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, what it shows us when we when we run the, when we we say run query, it shows us a bunch of examples yeah. basically. Exactly. Uh, you see you see actual actual data when the, the other one is nice, but the other one doesn't give you <clears throat> give you the data uh, in, yeah. insights. And here you have uh, you you see your your data. Exactly. And we also see that our hundred thirty two thousand nodes and two hundred thousand relationships made it into the graph as well. So mm. that's that's nice, right? Um, so that means you could now start exploring or querying the data. So I would say, um, looking at the time, uh, let's look at the explore a little bit, which is our um, which is our uh, visual exploration tool, formerly called Bloom, 
And yep. uh, so we can just rename this into citations. Okay. And then we could say, for instance, we want to see co cited uh, articles, right? An article. Oops. Uh, oh, by the way, Bloom has now also a new feature which is called Show Me a Graph. When you click on this, it also shows you an. Let's see. This works. It should show you an example graph uh, as well. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Oh, I didn't click. I, I didn't hit return. <laughs> That's why nothing happened. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, but it also has like similar to the other one. Uh, just shows us an example graph of uh, yeah. venue with authors and and and, and so on. Right? So, yeah. Which is quite nice for like a first quick. Um, exactly. One. I mean, this this is this is what I talked about earlier. Right? I mean, you 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 import your data. You, we, we didn't write a single line of of of, of cipher yet. So we yeah. um, you you get a get a preview of your data. You look at it and. Usually, you you kind of understand what what's what's going on because you you know your data, and then yeah. uh, visualizing it helps helps you to to get more uh, more secure, more 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 safe, more more sure about that that this is actually what you wanted yeah. to see. And then now yeah. here uh, you, you show us already you you clicked two two things yeah. together, two articles that are. Yeah, so what I connected. what I did basically yeah. is. Uh... I started with one article, right? So I said article and then just press tab and then it has offers me like article to article, article to author, article to venue. And if I want to have the citation network, I can go to article to article. I could also continue to the next article. So then it also would find me pass of three. So if yeah. I do this um, and run this, then I get basically a th three pair citation network as such. Right? And you also yeah. already see that there are certain things that are kind of isolated here, these kind of smaller uh, groupings as such, but they're also like larger clusters uh, over here, right? So where, where yeah. we see, uh, actually it's quite nice on the overview as well that um, these are uh, like visual, visual also on on the overview as well, right? So yeah, then, they, they are very dense. Um, then what you could actually do is, uh, let's see. Um, I think I just realized we should have an uh, and a feature request that uh, selects just a cluster of nodes uh, as such, uh, because otherwise I would have to remove the, these here manually. Um, what I wanted to show is actually be besides the force based layout, there's also hierarchical layout basically, which then shows us like you have like a root article and then the citations as an as a tree below yeah. that, right? So um, so that was the other thing that I wanted to show real quick. And of course, you can do, uh, um, for instance, uh, if I say um, clear scene, I get a bunch of articles here, uh, let's say 1,000 articles, and I pick two articles at random. Then I can also say something like, what's the shortest path between these two articles, for instance, right? So they have been published to the same publication as such, right? Mm -hmm. So which is not as interesting. Um, uh, I think, I'm not sure if you can actually select different shortest path no i don't think so but we could expand through sided uh, relationships so they basically uh, you could only go along sided relationships as, as such right but mm -hmm. um so that's something uh that um it's also possible to explore the data here uh in interactively and visually right so i can say expand to yep. the authors and then i want to see these these four authors uh what other papers have they uh written for instance, right, and then we see, okay, they we're not so <laughs> not so many. <laughs> it's only yeah. one in, in here. And so on. So yeah. you can also visually explore this and then also select a bunch of nodes and say, um, for instance, if I want to uh, select all these nodes here, I can did I do this? So I can also expand all of them basically into sided relationships and then we can see, okay, are there clusters forming, for instance, in here and, and, and so on. Right. And then yeah. I can, of course, uh, also save cipher phrases like the show me a graph uh, phrase is also just a saved cipher phrase where I can do more complex uh, stuff as well. Yeah. Cool. Um, and then uh, the other thing that I qu quickly wanted to show on this data set is uh, basically uh, co-authorship. So people co-authoring uh, information uh, or, or papers together, right? So this would be basically I find an author who uh, authored a paper or an article. 
and then an, an second author who a2 right so that's kind of the, the graph pattern for one author uh, wrote an article and the second author uh, basically contributed to the same article right and uh, what i want to do is i want to see uh, um a comma a a2 how frequently they've done this right so i want to see are there authors that more often than others work together collaborated uh, and uh, if i do this uh, can i can aggregate them by frequency and then order by frequency descending limit 10 and perhaps we just return the author names and let's see and i probably put in the directions in the wrong direction so it's actually from article to the authors and so this gives me now uh, like frequently uh, co-occurring and of course we see each pair in either direction so we could also add a second condition that says where id of the one author is greater than the other author then you only get each author once each pair once each pair yeah right. so this is actually quite interesting so we see actually those are people that uh, kind of collaborated quite often and uh what we could do now is we could turn this into a relationship in our graph, right? So we could uh, in, uh, basically say this is an um, uh, collaboration or co-author relationship mm -hmm. as such, right? And uh, what we could say basically here is um, with a, a two, uh, we could, for instance, say where frequency is greater than five, and let's return how many of these author pairs we didn't get, right? Co author pairs. So let's see, we get 373, that should be okay. And then we say basically A is a co author of A2. Mm -hmm. So we create a new relationship and we set uh, the uh, count to the frequency, right? How often they uh, collaborated together. So it creates these uh, new relationships and now we should see our co-author relationship and we see these clusters of people that work together, right? So here's a, like four yeah, people yeah. that time and again work together as such, right? So, and in principle, we should be able to put count on here, but I think that's something that we already discovered last time that this doesn't work. Um, oh no, it worked. Oh, okay. it does work, yeah. Uh, so you have to redraw it, force it to redraw. Uh, so you see that, oops. Uh, so 7, 13, 19, 7 times, right? So that's kind of a frequent cluster of collaborations. And and so we see uh, basically how often pairs of people or groups of people work together as such. And now that we cr uh, added uh, these uh, relationships, uh, we can also refresh our perspective here and get our co-author relationship here. So we have now also an author, uh, co-author relationship. Let's see, do we do this? No, I think, yeah. Author, oh, sorry, no, not author, co-author. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. right. And here we see our uh, complete cluster of, of people. So there's a group of five here. Uh, mm -hmm. Here's another group of five. So you see like they, these are probably like more longer term collaborations that frequently or like a tri triangle here um, yeah. that probably one person was always the main author and the other two contributed or something like that. So that's in co-authorship. And similarly, and we even, could also- you, you could even filter uh, by uh, by number, right? I mean, you could say, okay, if, if yeah, number needs exactly. to be hi <clears throat> higher than so three- Something that we can, can do here. Uh, so we have count and we have between uh, six and the highest ones are like in the 21 at the bottom 21 says. right so yeah so we could filter out the ones that have only six and apply this filter and then dismiss filtered elements and then you see that some of these uh, relationships are gone and there are many much fewer with uh, seven plus right so that's only yeah. 21 uh, no don't actually see how many of these um 
Right, so that's something that we can do here. And similarly, you can also do a co-citation uh, relationship where you basically say which papers have been cited together, uh, right? So not which papers cited which other papers, which is kind of the direct thing, but which yeah. pair of papers have been cited together, so which, which kind of have a stronger relationship to each other, right? So that would be almost similar to that. Uh, it would be just instead of... Uh... So there's an, there's an article here in the middle, but we're not really interested in this article. Uh, you're basically just interested in these two articles, A1 and A2, basically, right? And uh, then this would be like a co-cited uh, relationship, right? So this paper and this papers have always been cited in pairs, so they kind of belong together as such. And what's cool about this co-cited relationship is actually the following. Um, a few months ago, uh, Nature published or a few years ago, it was 2019, Nature published this really cool video. Um, it has also some spherical music, but what I wanted to show you is, uh, I can run it a little bit faster. Uh, it probably sh uh, shows 150 years of Nature papers, basically, uh, with their co-citation relationship. So which papers have been cited mm. together. Uh, as such, right? <laughs> and, yeah. and they're colored by topic, I think. And uh, that basically... Um, Oh yeah, right. The color is the Take, yeah. uh, but that's kind of the relationships that are uh, like which which two papers have been cited together, and that's kind of the the relationships, right? So and uh, so they, they have like this time view as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So and 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 that's quite quite nice. So you see that uh, like it expands to different areas, expand, and yeah, initially yeah. there was like more physics and then like chemistry and biology and, 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 and so on. And then new areas expanded like computer science, nuclear physics, and then like machine learning more recently, right? Yeah. Uh, which is really cool. And what's nice is they have also like an, an article and an interactive version of that as well. Um, so you can actually go here and Let's see if this renders. Yeah, right. So it's like an interactive version of this of this data that you can access. And fortunately, mm -hmm. uh, this data also has a data source that you can download. Yeah. And so what I thought we could also do is basically uh, taking this data and look at the co-sided uh, relationship. So it's basically the same as what I just showed you in in this one here, this co-sided relationship between two two papers, basically, right? Yeah. Um, what we could also say uh, here is basically a min uh, a uh, actually, I think uh, if we two put call this a one and a two, and this in the middle a. Um, then we could actually say uh, which year uh, of the year, um, and we could set the year actually as uh, right. So we could say actually a year range, right? So and uh, what's the first year that it's been they've been co-sided, and what's the last year? Right. Ah, okay, yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, first year and r dot last year equals last year, right? So and then we can probably go down to three or so. Let's see. Okay, that creates four hundred fifteen, and if we go greater than two, five hundred relationships. So we now have a new co-sided relationship here in our graph that also has kind of which articles were cited together, and then one when was the first year, the last year. And, and 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 so on, right? So which is quite interesting, as well. Yeah. Uh, as such, and so actually it's the same as the nature uh, data here. And so what I did a while ago, uh, also in 2019, I think, is I created a load script for that for this. Uh, but because these have CSV files now, we could also just say, if you wanted to uh, use a data importer to import those CSV files. Um, we can we can do this as well, right? So let me mm -hmm. just download this model with data. So we have it for safekeeping. Um, 
shoot citations they don't put out this one replace and then we can clean this out unfortunately they don't have an um, shared id uh, between the two that's kind of unfortunate yeah. right so this one has this index here uh, so if you look at our data again in in query uh, if i look at article so the articles have all these uh, this index um, but this is an uh, a different index than the nature papers have uh, unfortunately so we can't merge them together we could merge them probably by title um it would be actually interesting to see if we could merge them by title as such uh perhaps you should yeah, try it wouldn't, that. wouldn't uh, be as as accurate but we don't yeah as but you can try it i mean yeah. that's uh yeah that's why we are discovering uh, here, right? So exactly. Uh, yeah. So I mean, for for scientific reasons, I I wouldn't recommend doing it like this. But I mean, it's probably yeah. the next best approach. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. So let's clean this out, and then we just uh, uh, use the title uh, delete. And here I have uh, the nature data, nature papers. That's what you could download. Mm -hmm. um, as such and as you can see they have a lot of like x y coordinates and stuff like that for the visualization right so they basically just pre oh, i see pre visualized okay. it or pre render the layout and then uh also the node size and, and things like that um yeah it's very too so big the actual... for, for for their visualization tool then. exactly right so yeah. uh so and then if we uh basically again take our our data here and let's say uh we take our notes and the only thing that we're interested in is the year, category, nature ID, and title. Right? And um, so I just realized, unfortunately, they have only their nature ID as a source and target here. Um, so we would need to merge them together later. Oh. Right? Mm -hmm. But what we can do now is basically uh, just do a co-sided relationship here. Uh, relationship. And uh, use the cosite edges source target. And then we have our data and could import this. And then it should hopefully, if you're not exceeding our uh, <laughs> instance size, that's the <laughs> question. Let's see if it all fits in there or not. Uh -huh. Exciting. Suspension. Oh no, oh, we have too no. many nodes. Uh, okay. So let's clean this out uh, and try, try again. Let's see if this works. I think there's a new function as well in uh, in Aura. Uh, oh yeah, you can, you're right, you, Alex. Let's you, yeah, let's use can, this. Uh, uh, oh, um, see, there's another new function which is called load dataset. Actually, so we can actually ah, override it with good. one. That's also really new. That's yeah. really yeah. fresh. Can and also... then there's reset to blank as well. Yeah, exactly. Reset to blank. So if you are playing with data and then you have some some stuff going exactly. on and you don't want to use it anymore, you don't have to kill it uh, yeah. and, and start a, a create a new one. You can just click on that on yeah. that button there and uh, and reset to blank and then you can um, yeah, can exactly. start from scratch. So uh, from that perspective, I think it's reset to blank now, and now we can. Oh no! What's happened here? It should be running. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I think Workspace still has some hiccups. Perhaps you need to reconnect mm -hmm. uh, this one. Password. Input is partially completed. Okay. Connect. I think now it doesn't like us anymore. Connect. <laughs> Password connection. So we should have used your suggestion of uh, of reset data or plan erase database immediately. That would have been probably better. Uh, yeah, okay. I remember to 
too late. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Um, but okay, let's yeah. see. Here we go. Yeah, it's it's the better way to do it. So yeah, definitely. Um, Good point. We need to remember that for the future. So currently it's empty, right? And while the input is running, uh, we should see data coming in here as well. And that's basically the same uh, data set as this uh, visualization here, right? So which is quite quite nice. So we could do a similar visualization. There's a really cool library called uh, 3D Force Graph. And I did a Neo4j version of that, uh, which basically gives you really cool visualizations. Like for instance, down here, you can see what this looks like, right? And I think if the example still works, uh, it should hopefully render, right? So here is, you see basically an Neo4j graph rendered as a 3D model as such. And if you point this uh, to our site co-sided uh, database, then it should we should be able to reproduce the nature visualization here as well, which is quite quite nice. Mm -hmm. right. So this time we were no problems. Hundred, uh, sorry, eighty eight thousand nodes and two hundred thirty nine thousand relationships. So that's much more uh, papers. I uh, know it's probably the same number of papers, but but many more co sided relationships. Right. And yeah. then we see basically this is uh, our our co sided graph now that we can can look at and explore and and, and, and so on right so that's definitely something uh, that we can um, that we can use right? exactly and the same of course in in bloom we can look at our uh, article Article tab article. That's then our co-citation graph here, right? And you see some things form really close clusters as such here, and and some things are more loosely connected. And something yeah. that we can actually do is we can do a Google-based yeah, styling. What we, saw, what we saw before yeah. um, that there are just a couple where there is really dense collaboration yeah. and uh, regularly uh, also. Yeah. And here is actually uh, the uh, colors are now applied by category. Um, so these are now like the category of the of the article. If I didn't click yeah. it wrong, that's my rule based Hier hierarchy category. Yeah. Right. So and there are like values. thirteen of them. Yeah. This colors. is <clears throat> almost like uh, like the. I mean, this is basically the same as the visualization from. Um, from, nature. from nature, but not uh, yeah. not three D, but two D. Um, exactly, it. it's two D. Right? Yeah. Right. Um, cool. And uh, with that, I think we're out of time. But I also showed everything that I wanted to show. I think I can probably paste uh, the nature thing here as well with the load script. And yeah, and we can. Uh, I can add it to the description in the. Um, yeah. And where is my restream? Some where my restream URI went away. <laughs> Note. I don't know. I just send it to you real quick, and you yeah, can just send it to it. me. Exactly. I can I can put it. And in here's the, also the link to the uh, visualization, and down here is also the link to the YouTube video as well. So if you if you want to see that, uh, it's also there. Yeah. Right. So that's kind of the YouTube video. Okay. Cool. And with that, I think we're uh, uh, out of uh, time. And uh, at some point, we can look at the full open citation data <laughs> as yeah. such. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. OK, cool. No, that, that's that's great. Thank you very much, Michael. Uh, thank you all for, <clears throat> for watching. Um, and um, yeah. Uh, we will be uh, back next Monday, uh, then maybe already with some uh, insights on notes. So please register for notes yep. uh, 2022. Um, I'll yep. be back tomorrow, uh, Tuesday uh, afternoon in uh, Central European time zone, 5 p.m. Uh, uh, with Sebastian from Wireworks, where we discuss uh, graph visualizations um, and um, and Super. graph algorithms with, with, with yep. GDS. So um, 
that would be interesting and very very insightful so if you're interested in that tune in uh and uh, and uh, yeah i hope you all have a great week um and see you soon super sounds good take care everyone